What's up, YouTube? Ah, man, what a day. So today, uh, went with the wife to pick up some more furniture. I tell you what, man, moving into a new house and trying to, um, I guess, a new house, a new shop, um, trying to get things organized for the home, the shop, uh, started a new job. I know many of you guys have... Uh, you know, sent well wishes for that. So I thank you for that. Uh, but just trying to get, you know, acclimated to the new job and the new company and my teams and all that kind of stuff has been hectic. So I think each and every one of you, why is that in the camera? Why is that in there? That, that's still in there. Let's see if that's better. I'm trying to get that little bit of a, there we go. Maybe that's better. Yeah. Uh, trying to get um, everything acclimated and get myself into a routine, working from home now. So that's taking some getting used to as well. Uh, but in general, uh, things are going good. I'm very, very happy. Uh, it's just been very crazy. So thank you guys for supporting the channel, supporting the video. Uh, I'm still trying to get content out. Like, you know, so I've been doing this whole John Deere series thing. Got the John Deere sitting over there. Uh, funny enough, I went to the gas station today and uh, I ran across a farmer who uh, had a bunch of John Deere tractors sitting outside of his shop. And lo and behold, he wants to sell some of them. So um, stay tuned for more future content. Never, fit, never envision myself being a small, uh, engine mechanic. <laughs> I wouldn't even call it that. I'm not, not even the mechanic. I, you know, hell, I could barely figure out wiring issues sometimes without you guys' help. Uh, but nonetheless, I do enjoy working on small engines because it does improve my mechanical ability in terms of understanding how they operate, how they work, how to do some basic diagnostic type stuff. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. So enough with that. Let's talk about what we came here for. Tools. So went to Harbor Freight, or not Harbor Freight, went to track the supply today. And I picked up the sets of gear wrench, uh, mini screwdrivers, right? And uh, I'll open one for you guys. I've already got it open. Hopefully you guys can see that and I'm still in frame. Let me make sure. Yeah, I am. Okay. So, real quick, uh, it's the gear wrench set. These are 12 piece. It comes with many screwdrivers and many torques. Um, there's all the information about what you get black, so black oxide, good grip, resistance handle to oils and solvents, tri lope profile, limited lifetime or lifetime warranty. There's your uh, part number there if you're interested. Now, I've seen these sets on. Um, eBay, because that's where I always go. Whenever I buy something, I always go to eBay because when I'm buying a tool, whether it be at a pawn shop or from somebody um, offline, I go to eBay to figure out if I were to buy that, if I for that item, what's the quickest way I can get it and what's the cheapest price I can buy it for the condition that I want. And eBay is a good baseline to tell me what I should expect to pay, all right? So I went out there to eBay and I found this set. And this set was like the cheapest I think I could get it for was like 25 bucks plus shipping or something to that effect, like less than $30. But right now, uh, Tractor Supply has this set on sale for $10.99 clearance. I think it's $9.99, $9.99. So if you guys are interested in these sets and you cannot find them, and you don't have a tractor supply, let me know in the comment section. You have to send me the money via pay, uh, PayPal, Venmo, uh, what else do I have? Cash App, Zelle, I have all of them. You have to send me the money in advance, which means you have to pay for the tool and your own shipping, and I will go pick these sets up for you, and I will ship them out on your dime, your dollar. I'm not making a single penny off of it, but I think it's such a good deal that I wanted to buy more sets, but I didn't have um, but I, I didn't have a need. So we are going to be giving this set away to a lucky viewer. I don't know what we're going to do in order to, um, 
uh, to, to get this sent to somebody what the, the, the giveaway is going to consist of, but someone is going to walk away with this set and I'm going to pay for shipping and all that stuff. And you're going to get a free set of tools. So look for that coming in the next video or two. So let's look at the tools themselves. It comes in this nice little uh, uh, vinyl type case, uh, which is big, bigger than probably what it needs to be. But uh, it does display the tools fairly well. You get all your, your Phillips, um, your flatheads, uh, and it goes from, what is that? Let's see here. It goes from the biggest size you get. Hell, I can't even read it. What does it say? Let me look at it off camera, guys. Uh, this is a 10 by 60, and the smallest you get. Hell, let's, look, let's do this because my eyes ain't young anymore. So you get... For the mini screwdrivers, 1.5 to 2.5, then a zero, all the way up to a number one, and then you get a T5 Torx to a T10 Torx. So that's pretty cool. Um, I will say, on my first observation, um, I grabbed this one here. The things I like about it, I do like the tri-lobe feel. I do like the fact that they got rubber here. I like the fact that this portion here is also rubber. This is rubber, this is hard plastic, the portion that is in orange. Uh, it does have the spinning top, so you can do like that. You can let that rest in your hand, and you can spin it. You can do like this, and you can spin it. So this moves very freely. It feels like a good. It feels like a good screwdriver for it. being a mini screwdriver. It feels really, really good. Um, I'm, I'm, I really like them. And for ten dollars, dude, you can't beat it. That's you'll never get a snap-on screwdriver. And I do have that. Let me see if I can. Pull out a couple here off camera. Hang on a second. Uh, let me move the camera back a minute here. And let me see here if I can grab a couple snap on for you guys here as a comparison. All right, there we go. You can never get snap on um, screwdrivers for that cost. Snap ons are a little bit longer, they don't have that, that feature here. They do have the rubberized portion, but it stops on the lobe and does not extend down to this recess portion or this uh, um, uh, contour portion here. And so, um, yeah, th there's there's some benefits to the gear wrench design that I like over and above the snap-on. Snap-ons are still like, you know, snap-on, right? You can't really go wrong with a snap-on tool. Uh, but gear wrench did a great job at this set. And at the price point, God, you can't you can't beat it. Uh, here's a flathead as a comparison as well. Uh, still longer than the gear wrench, but nonetheless a good screwdriver. So that's pretty cool. I like that set. And the Torx is the same way. I'm trying to find a big Torx here, the 10, I think it's here. And that's not the 10, it's probably the, the smaller one, T5 or whatever, T4. Um, but the Torx are good. There's a good look at the uh, the tips of them. Let's see if I can get a bigger one here. There you go. And this, this is for light duty work, right? This is not for heavy duty work. You, you know, this, this could be like if you're repairing a dash or, you know, like a, a small comp uh, electronic component in your car or, or even something around the house you could use it for, you know, whatever the case may be. But you need to have a couple precision screwdrivers there. Too many, too, time, too many times do you grab a bigger screwdriver, even the snap-on ones are a little bit bigger um, you can get like zeros and number twos and number ones, but sometimes you get the wrong screwdriver and you try to take a, take apart a screw that's too small for the screwdriver you're using and you end up eating it up. Um, I see a lot of comments about uh, Torx and screwdrivers in general, and people always complain and bitch about the tool itself. You got to remember, guys, we're nine times out of ten people are using cheap Chinese steel and those you ever use a you ever try to take apart a screw or a loosen up a screw or tighten a screw and it just eats it up it doesn't matter what screwdriver you have it's not the screwdriver's fault it's the inferior metal that we get from offshore suppliers and it's just a case it's just what happens right so don't blame the tool blame the manufacturer who's making the shitty screws and fasteners that we all have to deal with right so that got me to thinking more about um miniature tools in general Right, so I think in everybody's arsenal, whether you're a mechanic or a technician or a DIYer, you need to have some miniature tools. I've got things like miniature pliers here. These are a set of Proto. Uh, this is a blue point set here. 
Uh, these are snap-on there. These, one of my favorite ones. I love the, uh, first of all, the, the, the jaws are absolutely fantastic on these. Um, they, they bite really well. And the fact that they fit in your palm, you can really put a lot of clamping force down. Um, now, it, obviously, if the bolt or whatever you're trying to take part is really on there, these ain't going to get it. But in general, the, the handles feel good. The teeth profile is really sharp. Um, and I like them. The, these are part number A or four, what is it? Four, four ACF. Um, these are snap on. These uh, other ones here are more like a, a, these are adjustable or slip joint type plier. These are also good. These are a little bit older. These are like the Power Track 2s or whatever by Proto. Still a good player of pliers. And then these are probably the worst ones. These are actually Blue Point. Um, and I don't like them at all. They are older design, but they're great for like pulling wire or something like real tiny. They don't really have a really good pro uh, jaw profile. Uh, and so, you know, these are just like very, very light duty. Just um, wrenches are another cool thing to have. I've got the snap on here. This is really not necessarily a miniature tool. It is small, but I call anything miniature that can fit basically in the palm of a grown man's hand. Now, if you got Donald Trump hands and they can't fit around a tool, that's just your problem, right? But for us normal men uh, who have bigger hands, you know, you want something that can fit in there that you can get a good purchase on. Uh, so that when you get to try to loosen a faster or tighten a fastener, you got a good grip. You're not going to, you know, fly off and break it or hurt yourself trying to do it. Pry bars, another one. I got all the different types of pry bars. I think I bought pretty much all of them. Um, I think I even have the, uh, this is this is Joe from Joe All Stars uh, from Coon Trucking Channel. Uh, I got the Snap-on pry bars. I think my buddy uh, John um, Stefan Stefanko hooked me up with the Snap-on ones. I got the Mac pry bars, and I've got oh, that's another snap on. I think I even had the um, Maco ones too, but I think when I got rid of my Maco service cart, they went along with that. Um, miniature ratchets, right? So you know anything from a three inch drive. I don't really have a quarter inch drive one, a miniature one. Maybe I need to get one, but like even this guy here, and this is not even the smallest snap-on uh, ratchet you could get, but still nonetheless, it fits to your hand. You could get in there and you can really do some work. Um, and it's got a nice footprint in it, a nice feel to it. I absolutely love them. This is the latest one that I got. This is not a snap-on. This is actually a Power Torque. Power Torque is one of those brands that people are kind of sl they sleep on a little bit. Um, I think because it's like an O'Reilly's brand, people don't give them much credit. But they do come out with some pretty decent tools like this particular one. This is the smallest quarter-inch drive head that I've ever seen. Um, it does come with a little bit of a few different types of bits. You know, your, your hex bits, your Phillips, your flathead, and even a quarter-inch drive anvil that will fit in there. Uh, this set, I think, was like $14 at O'Reilly's. Uh, you just simply install it like so, if I can get it to go. And then there you go. And you get the little thumb wheel on the head, and you can just get in there and do work. This is even smaller than the Titan that everyone talks and raves about. Uh, this is smaller than the Titan head. And it even has a quarter-inch drive or a, a um, hex drive um, and like a Torx type end on the back of this here uh, that you could get in there and do a little bit more work. But this is real thin, real nice profile. But once again, it's small enough to fit in your hand. You can get in there and, and get some things done with it. So this is a pretty cool ratchet. I haven't found a specific use for it yet, uh, but it was one of those tools. You know, you ever go to a store and you, you see something and you're like, eh, I don't necessarily need it per se, um, but it's at the price point and that's not going to come out very easily. Uh, that's one of the good things. It's got a very good secure grip on the bit, so don't worry about dropping a bit. But you ever go to the store, you find something that it's at the price point that says, hey, maybe I should grab it just in case I need to use it in the future. And the last thing we talk about is wrenches, right? So um, I recently picked up this set of um, midget wrenches, I guess is what they call them. Stubby wrenches is what I refer to them as. Uh, these are snap-on. You can get any brand. It doesn't matter what they are. Uh, but, uh, you know, once again, having a nice small tool, working on the John Deere tractor, I was putting on some of the side pieces, side panels, and uh, the, the normal quarter-inch drive ratchet was just a little bit too long. The short wrench, actually, if you compare this one to snap-on's short wrench, um, that's what they call it, comparative to the uh, snap-on stubby or midget wrench, 
there is about, what, two, maybe three inches of difference between the two wrenches. So that could be a big difference depending on how much surface area you got to work within. Uh, these could be the saving grace. So once again, this is a nice tool to have. You may not use it all the time. It's going to be for low torque applications for the most portion, um, for the most point rather. But it is nice to have them. So I guess in general, guys, look to get yourselves some... Uh, miniature tools or some mini tools or small tools, whatever you want to refer to them as, tiny tools, I think people have called them in the past. It helps. And for the price point that you could pick up some of these things in, you don't have to buy top of the line. You don't have to have Snap-on. You don't have to have Proto. You don't have to have Matco. Um, you name it. You know, you have to have gear wrench, but you look for something that is good quality, that's going to last you a while, uh, but that's going to also be able to put in the work that you need. So, I'm really, really happy with these miniature tools, guys. I'm telling you, if you have a tractor supply in your area, do not hesitate to go out and get you guys a set of these gear wrench uh, mini torques and screwdrivers, this mini torques and screwdriver set. It, for $9.99, dude, like buy two of them. Put one in your house, put one in your car, put one in your toolbox at work, put one in your toolbox at home. Make sure that you have enough of them. Because you never know when you're going to need them, guys. So that's all I got for you guys tonight. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said, we got more projects coming. We've got... What is that screw to? I don't even know what that's for. It's got Loctite on it. Huh, I don't know. Um, oh, I know what that's for. Never mind. Anyway, um, make sure that you are uh, subscribed to the channel. Make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment, guys. Let me know what you think about having miniature tools in your toolbox arsenal. Um, and like I said, we're going to be doing a giveaway of that set over there. So we stay tuned. You got to be watching the channel, guys. We got to get, we're almost at 7,000 subscribers, which is big. I, I really do appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Let's get that, that subscriber count up to 7,000. It's kind of like my own personal goal. Try to get that done before the end of January. That would be awesome. Um, cause I want to be at 10,000 by the end of this year. So hopefully we can get there. Um, if you guys enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. It doesn't cost you a dime. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an awesome, awesome opportunity to, to interact with us YouTube, YouTube content creators and just kind of share your insight and your thoughts about certain tools and projects, etc. Thank you guys also to everybody who helped me out with the John Deere electrical issues, uh, electrical issue. I do appreciate that. Um, Matt Clark, big shout out to Matt Clark, big shout out to uh, Jack's Journal for giving me some some insight and some tips uh, and all the rest of you guys who suggested checking certain things on a tractor. Um, I read them all. I went back over them days later um, and I really do appreciate that work, that help, that, uh, that advice. Like I said, we're going to be getting another project in hopefully very, very soon. And uh, it is so you guys will be following along on that as well. Thank you once again. Look forward to 2023 content, and uh, that's all I got. Peace.